I stopped by just to tell you I love you. And since you're not at home, I'm writing it to you. Elena Poniatowska, El Recado. Hello again. Let's continue our journey with the valiant Hidalgo and his savvy squire. In chapter 38, the Countess Trifaldi formally arrives. Here Cervantes combines references to triangles and various articles of dress. The skirt, tail, or train, or whatever they call it, consisted of three points which were held aloft by the hands of three pages, also dressed in mourning, making for a pleasing and mathematical figure via those three acute angles formed by the three points. Critics have interpreted this passage as alluding to the Asuna line of nobles, or else to mermaids. Either way, Trifaldi is a burlesque and lascivious figure, but there's also an echo of Euclidean geometry in all of this, with its heavy emphasis on triangles. Finally, the narrator tells us that Cide Amete Berengeli investigated the significance of Trifaldi's name, finding that, according to her real last name, she was called the Countess Wolfrobe because so many wolves roamed her county. But she managed a transformation. But this countess, to signal the innovation of her skirt tail, refused the name Lobuna and adopted Trifaldi, what turns wolves into triple-tailed dresses. It's a tremendous emblem for the civilizing effect of commerce in textiles. In Trifaldi's company are 12 duenas arranged in two lines, all intricately dressed and with black veils that hide their faces. There are more comic notes of gender confusion here. The attentive reader recognizes that this Trifaldi must be the Duke's majordomo. She also recalls the role of Dorotea. Trifaldi speaks with more of a deep and raspy voice than a subtle and delicate one, and she slips up at the beginning of her speech. May it please your highnesses, you should not perform such courtesies to this your humble man, I mean your humble maiden. More ridiculousness in Trifaldi's speech derives from her abuse of the superlative suffix isimo, which adds the sense of exceedingly or ultimate to her list of adjectives and nouns in Spanish. Did you know the Spanish term loba from the Greek lope, a type of cape made from animal skin, indicates a robe of dark cloth that formed part of the uniform worn by scholars. Thus, the name of the Countess Trifaldi, previously known as the Countess Lobuna, has multiple connotations. Of course, Trifaldi arrives in search of our heroes, his most immaculate knightness, Don Quixote of La Mancha, supreme, and his most excellent squireness, Panza. She throws herself at Don Quixote's feet and praises him, O oh, invincible knight. Given the darker, disillusioned tone of part two, this is ominous. Trifaldi also uses Don Quixote's medieval F instead of the modern H, and she makes ironic use of the two senses of fabuloso, which can mean magnificent or false. O oh, valiant wanderer whose true feats overcome and obscure the fabulous ones of the Amadises, the Esplandiadines, and the Belianises. When Trafaldi turns to Sancho, she focuses on our squire's relative goodness and the sizes of beards. Oh, you, the most loyal squire that ever served a knight errant either in the present or the past, and longer on goodness than the great beard of Trifaldine, my attendant, who is here present. Sancho extends this comparison by professing his own moral humility in terms of facial hair, that my kindness, my lady, be as long or as great as the beard of your squire, seems to me beside the point. Just let my soul be both bearded and mustached when it leaves this world. Like asses, beards pose difficulty for modern readers. Just remember that they relate to political temperament and also to the woman question. Quixotic Mission to what science does Countess Trifaldi's name allude? A. Nutrition B. Navigation C. Geometry Correct answer, C. Geometry 
Trifaldi's story is another of Cervantes' summaries of the chivalric romances. Trifaldi is entrusted to educate and care for the beautiful young princess Antonomasia, the daughter of Queen Maguncia, who for her part is the widow of King Archipiela. Antonomasia is the future heir of the fictitious kingdom of Candaya, located on the tip of the Indian Peninsula across from the island of Sri Lanka. Finally, Don Clavijo is a young knight at the court of Candaya with whom Princess Antonomasia falls in love. And his rival is the evil giant Malambruno, who is also an enchanter and happens to be the first cousin of Queen Maguncia. In chapter 39, we will learn of the death of Queen Maguncia and Malambruno's curses on Princess Antonomasia, Don Clavijo, and the Countess Trifaldi and her retinue of maidens. That's all for now. Find out what happens next. If you liked this video and want to continue learning more about the knight errant Don Quixote de la Mancha, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel here. Also, you can enroll in our free online course on Don Quixote by clicking here.